Uh, welcome back. Before the break, I was talking to our distinguished guest today, Mr. Bajra Rashid MBE, about BCA and also UK BBCI. UK BCCI. BCCI. <laughs> uh, first things first, uh, we want to go to BCA and I was asking uh, Mr. Bajra Rashid uh, about uh, the workings when he was the president and how did he impress upon the government authorities to get more visas because in 2008 there was a big demonstration in Trafalgar Square. Uh, like any other industry, uh, catering industry also needs a specialist and qualified staff. And if you don't have a staff, no staff, no business. So, Badal Bhai. Yes. How, how did you handle this and how have you been handling this uh, problem, this chronic problem of trained and qualified staff? Uh, I know you represent, BCA represents the majority of the restaurant owners. Yes, yes. Actually, we always uh, say that we represent all the curry industry. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know that uh, although the British Bangladeshi own 12,000 restaurant, probably more now, mm -hmm. but Indian, this includes the restaurant Indian, and the takeaways. Restaurant and takeaways. But Indian, they don't have an association. Mm -hmm. Pakistani, I don't think they have a rest association. Mm -hmm. So when I was working as a president of BCA, mm -hmm. I actually was talking to the, you know, I was managed to create an alliance. Mm -hmm. When I organized a demonstration, back in you know, 2008, Trafalgar Square, mm -hmm. then I alliance say, many countries like India, Pakistan, Chinese, Chinese, or, and Turkish, Arabs, Arabs, and all the Bangladeshi organization. Mm -hmm. I create an alliance, alliance sorry, mm -hmm. and do a demonstration. Why? Because curry industry's huge problem is the staff crisis mm -hmm. and the immigration policies they introduced, which was point-based system. Mm -hmm. which was really affecting our industry. So, I mean, Indian, they say, Bajlubai, Rashid Bhai, we don't have any association. So you are representing us. Great. So I, I thought, yes, we took the authority and ownership. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And did huge lobbying from, you can say, from Dover to Scotland. Mm -hmm. Every government official, public, every you know, uh, stakeholder, every we did, mm -hmm. and I think we were very successful. First of all, we had to reestablish again mm -hmm. to the mainstream, who is BCA is, mm -hmm. and we were very. I mean, I was interviewed by BBC, you know, the main BBC, mm -hmm. so many times. Right. Sky Television. Al Jazeera Television, ITB, mm -hmm. Fox Television, American, mm -hmm. CNN. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, it was my journey was I felt so passionate to take the curry industry forward, mm -hmm. put the curry industry in a such a right position, what right. curry industry deserves, especially mm -hmm. the British Bangladeshi curry industry. Mm -hmm. And with help of my colleague like Pasha Bai and others, mm -hmm. we achieved a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, everybody knows all over the world knows what is the Bangladesh Catering Association is, mm -hmm. what they are doing, representing the total curry industry, representing the uh, whole community. And in this country, actually, we now, statistics say, about ex approximately 600,000 British Bangladeshi living in the UK. And I say, at least four, uh, you know, four, uh, 450,000 directly or indirectly involved with the curry mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. And this is this, this is, is our a great achievement. Yeah, I mean, I am a president of UKBCCI. I always taking this organization forward. We are working very hard. Mm -hmm. But wherever I go, I always talk about BCA because it's closer to your heart. Close to my heart. I think my blood mixed with the BCA, <laughs> and the curry industry is the backbone of the British Bangladeshi community. Uh, the curry industry, uh, apart from uh, employing so many people and uh, the turnover of 4.2 billion. Uh, pound sterling every year, you have also produced uh, a number of uh, celebrity chefs whose names, I mean, uh, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, interviewing uh, Mr. Tommy Mia, oh. and he has written, I think, 20, 23 books, uh, recipe books, 
And one of his books, the, the introduction, is written by none other than the queen herself, yeah. which is very unusual. The queen doesn't write introductions to any books, you see. But he has been so lucky. I do endorse Tommy Bai's work mm -hmm. because Tommy Bai actually is a symbol of what do you say, British Bangladeshi curry industry is a symbol. He is mm -hmm. a symbol. He is a successful man, and he is he is known everywhere. Mm -hmm. India, Bangladesh, America. He is known, and as you say, he's a brand. He, and he is a brand. He is a brand himself, and he is our colleague. Mm -hmm. And he's also a, you know, he does, he normally not member with any organization. Mm -hmm. He does his own, mm -hmm. but he is with, he is actually a associate member with the UKBCCI. He always likes Bozlubai, whatever mm -hmm. you do, I like to help you, mm -hmm. and I also like to help mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And he's very fortunate that Her Majesty, you know, what mm -hmm. she did right and endorsed. Mm -hmm. And when I was the president of BCA, and mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. Her Majesty always endorses our curry industry. Yeah. You know, I mean, the Prince Charles, you know, he was talking to me in a few pla place we mm -hmm. met. And when I was receiving my award, mm -hmm. he was talking about the curry industry. They were so much focused mm -hmm. that although we had a big recession in this country, but your industry comparing other industries mm -hmm. doing better. Mm -hmm. And I said, how do you know this? <laughs> it is really true. So this is amazing. Uh, what is? Uh, uh, There's always a question, uh, and mm -hmm. I think you are very, very ably placed to answer that. Mm -hmm. Is curry a part of the dining table at Ro at Buckingham Palace? Yes, it is. Yes, because we managed to, mm -hmm. we managed to supply curry to the Buckingham Palace to uh -huh. number ten down uh -huh. Downing Street several times, uh -huh. and now we used to say that uh, one of our ex-secretary general of BCA, he always say that when the chancellor of Exchequer do a budget, mm -hmm. unless and until he have a good curry before he present his budget, <laughs> he couldn't do a better one. <laughs> so Buckingham Palace, you say, number down, down the street or parliament, mm -hmm. curry, they're having everywhere. They have a restaurant in, in, in the House of Commons, isn't it? And that serves curry. The South Curry. Yeah, you are very right. Yeah. <laughs> and also, we are trying to have a, like a special corner in a curry place in the uh -huh, uh -huh. In, in House of Common. We are trying for that. Oh, that so specifically, be, curry place. Yeah, that will be great. Yeah. That that be great. I think we'll manage also, to do that Also, one your industries, uh, I'll come to the other, other uh, the organization that you are a president of, mm -hmm. but you know, the curry industry has made inroads, successes into the main restaurants, main pubs that were a stronghold of only sandwiches and, 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 and uh, other drinks, you see. Mm. But now you can have Rogan Josh, uh, Chicken Vindalu, this, that, in, in a pub. So this is, uh, you know, because there are a lot, to, lot of uh, say, things we can say. This is our, all our elders who started that business. And your hard work. And our hard work. We are grateful to them. And we, we just would congratulate to each other because curry is a household food everywhere, pub, restaurant, as you are mentioning, English, even service station, mm -hmm. five-star hotel, mm -hmm. they are all selling curry. Mm -hmm. And we managed to change the British food habit, fish and chips to curry. Right. And that was endorsed by our late foreign secretary, uh, Robin Cook. Mm -hmm. He said the curry is a national dish now. And especially the chicken tikka masala. Right. Let, shall I say mm -hmm. something about chicken tikka masala? Yeah, sure, sure. Chicken tikka masala actually the introduced by British Bangladeshi restauranter, mm -hmm. not Indian. Mm -hmm. And now Indian selling it. English restaurant they have a chicken tikka masala. Everywhere in the world chicken tikka masala. But this is we created it. So we are very proud of our yeah, our it. chefs. And our restaurant owners and colleagues, I think we done very well. Chicken tikka masala. You go to pub, local pub. You know, as you were saying, you've been to Ashford and even some of the remote places. Mm -hmm. You go to pubs, you see they sell chicken tikka masala. Mm -hmm. And who makes it? <laughs> so can they make? Can they make it? No, they they cannot make it properly. <laughs> That's why our uh, restaurant are still busy. But they still because it's the, they're still following it, isn't it? 
Yes, and we can also find in, in uh, high street uh, department stores like Asda, Tesco, Sainsbury's. Yeah, yes, uh, take know, it home and this is, uh, this is put two, in that one, yes. I put it two different ways. One is because curry is everywhere, Sainsbury, Tesco, Asda, which is very good. Curry is fully established here. Yeah. This is the most favorite food, food in this country. But on the other hand, we established this curry industry, curry restaurant, mm -hmm. but now they are making money. <laughs> so we have to do something. We are doing something. Yep, yep. How we retain our business. True, true. Okay? True. And they should give us the incentive. True, true, true. They, because we, we can also produce uh, uh, frozen food uh, and things like that. So that well, Some of us doing it, yes. but uh, not enough. I, IPCO is doing. I, IPCO is doing. Other, other uh, uh, f friends and my business colleagues, there are some of them doing it. Yeah. But we should go for a bigger scale. Right. Okay. Right. So that uh, revenue remain with us. That, that is our main intention. And it you know. can be re-channeled re and, and, and uh, to, to use uh, uh, to improve the car industry again. Exactly. Another thing I'd like to mention, when our, the, uh, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, mm -hmm. Sheikh Hasina, she was invited when, we, when, when uh, Britain was hosting the Olympic. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was invited in the Buckingham Palace as a special guest or something. Right. And the, all the guests, all the ministers were talking. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you're, uh, you are from Bangladesh, you are the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, but wherever we walk in the London street, we used to smell fish and chips, now we <laughs> smell curry. So your people are doing very well. So it's, it's nice to hear all these things, you know. Well, it's, it's, it's all, all the credit goes to our elders as well as uh, our contemporaries like you who have done uh, such great hard work, uh, contributed right. to the yeah. success of this uh, industry. And it has got, uh, brought good name yes. uh, to and, and created an image. Yes. And Kari has become a brand for Bangladesh rather than uh, it has been taken away from India. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is very true. I mean, some of us doesn't agree with me, but I think the curry industry, we are still dominating in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Mr. Basil Rashid, you are also a chairman of an insurance company and a hospitality resort and three medical or Medicare service institutions plus a 500 bed hospital in Bangladesh. We will talk about that mm. in our next segment, inshallah. Okay. And also something that you are president of, UK BCCI. Yes. And definitely. So after this break, we'll continue with our discussion. Very interesting discussion with uh, Mr. Curry himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't go away. See you after the break. <laughs> <laughs> 